Welcome to Cujo Sound and some more talks about microphones. My name is Bjorn Jacobson and I'll be your friendly guide through this whole mess. In the previous video, we talked a little bit about dynamic microphones. Some are led to believe that this means that dynamic microphones are always of omni characteristic, which means that they record everything around you. And that isn't always the case. Omni characteristic means that the microphone records everything around you in a sphere, and it's simply omnipresent. There are many different kinds of characteristics, and these are very important to know, as they explain one of the questions asked in the previous video. Why and how is it that some microphones can record from a certain direction? The most common one, I would say, would be a so-called cardioid characteristic. Some also call it the kidney characteristic, because the shape of the direction in which such microphone records can be shaped like a kidney. Omnipresent characteristic records everything around you regardless of where the source is from. There's also a thing called figure eight, which records only what's coming from the sides of the microphone, or in two directions, depending on which direction you turn the actual microphone. There are variations of these. There's also such a thing called supercardioid, which is more narrow in its direction. There, some call it club characteristic, because it resembles a club or a bat if you were to draw it. So how does this work? Perhaps you remember the Sennheiser 416 from my previous video. This is a so-called supercardioid microphone, and it does a lot of off-axis phasing. This can be slightly illogical if you're new to microphones. Maybe you know that this is a microphone that records directionally, but you don't know why or how it does it. A lot of students that I've met over the years look at a microphone like this and think that it records a lot because it has all these vertical openings on the side of the microphone, as I've shown in the previous video. It must record everything that comes through these, and that is partially correct, but this is where phasing comes into play. You may have seen sound resembled as a waveform like this. It symbolizes the sound's movement. It's easy to explain using such a waveform, and it represents the difference in air pressure between the normal air pressure that there is right now, and then the ups and downs of air pressure that there will occur when the sound wave is moving through it. But the sound pressure of wherever your microphone is can of course only be of one value. You cannot have two different kinds of air pressure at the same time. That would be physically impossible. You will always only have the combined value regardless of how many sources of emission that you might have. And this is really interesting. And a regular omnipresent microphone senses whatever air pressure is currently there, regardless of where it's coming from. This means that a more correct way of showing the air wave passing through the air is not by showing a waveform, it's actually by showing a gradient scale like this. Because that is how air pressure physically works. A sound that comes from here and another sound that comes from here will, regardless of where they're coming from, cause the total air pressure be of the two combined. Of course, if these two sounds come from the exact same distance of one another and they are perfect out of phase sync, this will cause problems. But that is rarely the case. And if that happens, then you have bad microphone placement. Phasing works like this, that if this waveform here is blended together with this waveform here, the combined waveform looks like this. To our human ears, it still sounds like the two sounds separated, but the waveform recorded and the waveform that you hear is actually this one, which is the two combined. But what if these two waveforms are the exact opposite values of one another? One is at its peak of its waveform and another is at its bottom of a waveform. Those two values will phase out each other and the total sum of those will be nothing, meaning that you can't hear anything. And this is how a directional microphone works. Instead of having only one access point to the membrane or the condensator inside the microphone, we can have a hole in the back of the microphone, causing sounds to also have access to the membrane from the other side. So whenever a sound comes from the direction of the hole, it reaches the membrane from both that side and the front at almost the same time, causing that sound to have its effect on the membrane from both sides. So whenever the waveform is positive, it is trying to push the membrane from both sides at the same time, which it can't do. Or if it's trying to subtract the value, it'll try to pull the membrane in both directions at the same time, which it also cannot do. To make it even more precise, usually a small delay is added between the phasing outside of the condensator and the part that you actually want to hear, so that whenever a sound comes from the back of the microphone, it will reach the front of the microphone at the exact same moment that it would also reach the back of the microphone, so that those two sounds and waveforms are perfectly out of sync, meaning that if there is a sound in front of you, that sound will be perfectly recorded and whatever sound came from behind you will be ignored. 
to some extent. So only sound that comes from this direction here will hit the front of the membrane and be recorded, and most other directions will be phased out. So what you actually record is basically this microphone picking up all sounds around you, and it is recording all those sounds. It is just removing the parts that you don't want. So what you eventually send to your sound card is the sound that the microphone allows to proceed into the electrical current. And that is how a directional microphone works most of the time, by phasing out the sounds from the directions that you don't want. And of course, there are microphones that does it in a different way or have very special ways of treating signals into the microphone and dealing with it. But overall, it works like this. That means that a microphone like this one, the Sennheiser MKH416, is it a good microphone? Yeah. If what you want to record is from a directional source and you want all other sources to be ignored, then you can point it at it. Surely, this is regarded as a high quality microphone and it also has a really good sound to it. No doubt about it. But if what you want to record is something omnipresent, like an ambient sound, and you want to hear the birds coming from all directions and the trees from all other directions too, then it's not a good microphone. Then you might actually be better off using your phone, which I, by the way, made a whole series of videos about. And you should definitely use another microphone if that's what you want to record. Actually, this whole video is recorded by a 416, which is why I'm able to speak and not have a microphone blasted in my face, one inch from my lip, my face covered in the pop filter. That's the joy of a super cardioid directional shotgun microphone. Thank you for watching this video. Consider giving it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching Cujo Sound. If you like this video and want to know more about game audio, hit the like and subscribe button, or maybe check out patreon.com forward slash Cujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel and the time I take off to create this material. Signing up also gives you access to a lot of other things. Thank you for watching.